Um, I think one of the most remarkable things that uh, we found during the OSAP program, and, and again, uh, the OSAP program uh, was a, a 24 month program that started in uh, 2008 and ended in 2010. But, you know, for the first time, we had a large team. We had about 50 people who were employed full time at OSAP. And then uh, we had $22 million allocated through the Defense Intelligence Agency for a two year period. So it's very rare in the UFO uh, field to have the luxury of resources and being able to study people over long periods of time after you know, they've encountered UFOs. So I guess one of the most remarkable sort of um, discoveries that we made uh, during the OSAP program was the intense medical effects that, that, uh, that some of these uh, UFO um, uh, cases cause in, in, in some people. I'll give you an example. Um, one of the one of the sentinel cases that we actually investigated over a, about a year actually and and it, and it went into a, almost a two year investigation was that this biotechnologist and his daughter were driving towards bend oregon in their in their vehicle on their way home and um, the daughter notices three small ufos a uh, bluish color that were darting around in the field beside them um once she noticed them, they immediately made a beeline for the vehicle as they were driving. And uh, one of them went right across the windshield. One of them went, uh, came into the car and, and went right across uh, both the, in their field of view, went right across the, uh, the windshield uh, inside the vehicle. But the third one actually went through the left shoulder of this biotechnologist, went through the upper uh, thoracic cavity and then emerged from the right shoulder and then shot out through the, uh, the window right in front of the daughter. I mean, this was a terrifying episode for the, for the daughter, especially as uh, she was witnessing all of this. But, you know, within, um, I would say 24 to 48 hours, uh, this guy woke up the following day with the left, the, the left side of his face was all sunburnt. Um, his, his ear had started swelling his eye, he was started lo losing the sight in his left eye. Um, within a week or, or a couple of weeks, he started losing his hair uh, on the left side of his head. And, you know, luckily we had on contract uh, MD, PhD, a uh, couple of MD, PhDs, um, really sort of as, as people who could get deep into medical investigations and look at medical injuries. So we deployed one of these people, uh, you know, on this case, and he followed uh, he followed this guy over many many months. But um, it turned out that um, a few months after this uh, this event had happened, um, he came down with a rare form of ductal carcinoma um, that luckily was not metastatic, so it uh, it, it did not metastasize. Um, and over a two year period, went through a lot of a lot of health issues. But in terms of being able to document all of that, we were very, very fortunate that we had access to blood samples taken from this guy before the incident. And then there were multiple blood samples taken uh, after the incident. So we were able to put, uh, piece together a medical forensic sort of picture of what had happened um, before and, uh, and after this incident. And we could document, you know, rises and falls of various immune, immune system parameters within this guy, uh, we, we, we saw that there were dramatic changes in neutrophil lymphocyte ratios over time. And you know this was for, from a, a, an OSAP a UFO investigation point of view, we think this was one of the sentinel cases because it, the, we, we had resources and we were able to, we had the luxury of, of following this guy over a year and a half to two years uh, after the incident. And as I said, we had blood samples taken before the incident. So we were actually able to postulate about cause and effect and the sort of the dramatic increase in adverse health symptoms that this guy had, had uh, suffered. Um, we were able to say with reasonable confidence that he suffered pretty well all of those after the uh, close encounter with this a small blue orb. Um, so 
that that's that was a case, and we had uh, several other cases that uh, Bas Osap encountered that sort of um, you know looked at the medical injury aspect, and that was one of the, the things that really surprised me. During the Miz, the NIDS era, we did not encounter too many of those cases. Um, you know, we were all the time databasing cases from, um, you know, we had about 1,800 separate UFO investigations under our belt by the time the NIDS database uh, went on ice, which was about 2003. Um, but we never saw, in, in terms of boots in the ground investigations of UFO effects, we never saw the sort of level of medical injury uh, that we saw sort of you know, up close and personal with a few of these cases. So I guess that's one of the things that really surprised me from the OSA uh, series of investigations. Did that person feel any burning sensation or any sensation at all when the orb went through him? Well, he, he actually did feel a sort of really weird, sort of uncomfortable. Um, it wasn't painful or or anything. He, he, he felt sort of... Um, discombobulated and sort of out of sorts as this thing was traveling through his body it was almost like um, a large, it, it felt like a very, very large bubble that was moving through his body. He actually did feel mm. the movement, but he didn't feel any pain or he didn't feel any discomfort. He just felt, uh, I, I would say it was sort of a version of mild vertigo. Uh, 